so today we are headed back from Bakersfield just delivered out there um, just came through up in Gamma, Illinois stopped and got fuel I stopped over in Stratford Missouri to get fuel because it was cheaper there and uh, well I topped off in Oklahoma City because it was a lot cheaper there came up to Stratford and usually I can buy it there come all the way up grab my load make it back to Stratford buy enough to get on down to Oklahoma City or Amarillo but uh, when I pulled in there, the line was all the way out to the red line. I mean, ridiculously long line waiting to get fuel. And that's the problem with finding cheap fuel is everybody else found it too. So I figured out how much fuel I was going to need. And I, it wasn't going to take... It wasn't going to take that much to top me off there. But if I came on up to Effingham, it was 50 cents, 52 cents a gallon more expensive and I did the math in my head I figured I would need 40 gallons uh, when I got to Effingham well whenever I got up there and pumped it was only 30 34 gallons is what I pumped to completely retop back off it comes out to less than $20 so it wasn't worth my time to sit and wait in that line for less than 20 bucks so I kind of did the math on it figured it figured it up and when I figured that out so I could come on up here so that's, that's another thing you got to figure on if you're completely filling up that would have been a $50 difference $52 difference at 100 gallons but just getting 33 or 35 or 20 gallons it, to me it's just not worth it um, so it's looking like I'll, I'll be up here tonight about 11 o'clock I do plan on going ahead and hooking up and uh, getting at least back out on the highway you know, getting at least out of Elk Park but. pulled in here at Middlebury and dang, pulled right straight to it Alliance Paradigm 1704 it says Alliance I'm not seeing the Paradigm on it but the serial number was right uh, come up here and look somewhere 1704 and take for damages and so far it looks so good they tell me they had a few in here with black tires and stuff thank goodness saying we ain't one of them them marks right there as long as they come off and they did fine but always check these vinyl pieces make sure there ain't no gashes rips and tears in that don't mess up see there's the paperwork in here it's not but they're their tool to let the tire down so that's good to know a lot of things out I'll check in here, see if the paperwork's in here. Nope. But since we're here, we'll go ahead and lock that up because we're going to need to be in here anyway. So I called and talked to a buddy of mine that hooked to one of these same trailers, came from the same yard. He said the keys were at the guard shack. So go ahead and hook up and, uh, We'll get the keys from them when we get up to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to record much of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my lug nuts torqued and get my tag put on, get everything hooked up, and try to get out of here as quick as I can. I ran into I wanted to show you guys. I got back here to put my battery in. And on the battery cable end, you see all that tape on them? On both sides it was. All right, they had these on there. Now, could I have just put them on that? Yes, but they were loose. So they were going to give issues anyway. I could feel whenever I wiggled the wire against these that these were not tight. So I took them off. Don't keep them for yourself because they do go with the treader. Drop them down in there. So make sure the light's on on the retract button and only hit front. And... You 
And there's the legs. Don't even look like I'm going to have to add any air to the bags. Which I had a little bit in them from before anyway. I don't have keys, so I can't lock that up. I just push it in tight. And I always check and double check your jaws on your fifth wheel and make sure that they're locked in. And they are. So I went in and turned my running lights on and checked my trailer brakes, make sure they all work and I have not moved the unit yet. And um, I pulled my mirrors out on both sides. Uh, looking at my springs, I think that I have enough air in there bags. I'm gonna walk around and check all the lights. Those top two are working. Looks like all the side markers are working so far. I do have this open, but they've got to get in there to get my keys. Yep, one well, working. And all these are working. The tag is on. Um, I didn't show putting a tag on this one because I didn't have enough hands and I'm kind of running short on time. But just make sure when you pull those little plastic pieces out to run these bungees through that you don't um, break this off. Especially if it's cold out, those things are get really brittle. So just barely pull that out enough to feed these through. Pull them down and hoop them back up around the ball. Another good reason for doing that is now you also have the bungee cord at the bottom protecting the trailer. And you got that little that little extra padding on that. And I've been using these forever. I was worried that's gonna cut the tag would cut through them right here. So far so good. I did link these in the description so you can see what I'm talking about, but you can pick them up at Walmart or wherever. I think we're ready to go. Here we are back in Joplin again. Went in and got a shower and got something to eat, about to wash clothes and probably hang out a little while. Well, I got hooked up and headed across to Effingham, stopped in Effingham, got something to eat and was headed to Stratford to get fuel and the wind kicked up to like 43, 44 mile an hour gusts and it was really affecting me pretty bad. Pulled into a rest area and sat and waited on a weather window. Uh, I saw it on the Windy app. I think that is a very important tool that everybody should have. I was talking to some of the guys in the rest area last night that had stopped also, and there was only one other guy there that had heard of it. So, um, I was looking, I could make it to Oklahoma City, and that's probably what I should probably be doing. But there was a wall of wind right at Oklahoma City and as the day gets on, it's going to come up on 44. And if y'all know 44, there's not a lot of good places to stop down through there. And I don't want to wind up getting stranded. And it's not worth it to take risks to me, you know, like that. And if I leave here at, I think, like midnight, I will have a the best weather window that I'm going to get until Thursday to get from Oklahoma City into New Mexico. There's still going to be wind, but it's not going to be so bad. But uh, I'll show you that windy app now, and that way you can see what I'm talking about. Here's my phone, and I have everything categorized out in different folders. And as far as daily tools, things that I use, Google Maps and all that stuff, you see wind alert and windy right side by side. And to the top right hand corner, that is wind compass. Wind compass pops up. It has been okay but it's not my ideal. It's hard. I, I haven't figured out how to look ahead and see how the weather's going to be further on down the road. So that's one reason that I don't use it more than the Windy app. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. And here is the Windy app. Now, I'm going to close it and restart it just so you guys can see exactly how it starts. So here's the Windy app. When it comes up, you'll notice the wind is not really bad where I'm sitting. 
what I'm worried about is right down the road because I-44 is a tow road and you could get hung out. I would rather, if I'm gonna be hung out, be hung out here where I have access to laundry and showers and decent food and all that. So I click on wind gust. It was already on wind. And we're not allowed to run if the wind goes over 25 sustained. And it's not that here at the moment. But the wind gust is what I really worry about. So there we are. And you can see it's 25 mile an hour gust right now with this fifth wheel. That doesn't affect me that bad. But as I start going, I hate when it does that. If you touch and hold the screen, if it, if it sees what you're doing, if you're not moving fast enough, it will think you're touching and holding the screen and it'll do that. So bear with me if that happens again. So you see Oklahoma City down there. I'm gonna be running right straight across through here and you'll notice the number just steadily goes up. Now that 35 and 40, that I don't wanna to try to drive in that, okay? So if I did, I'm gonna to have to stop in Oklahoma City and get fuel. So if you look down here at the bottom, there's a slider and you see it says 1500, which is three o'clock, okay? So if I scroll on forward, it's only gonna get worse and it's gonna move in on the tow road where I will have to come through. So if I would have kept going this morning, I would have probably been okay to get to Oklahoma City, but like I said, I need the laundry and everything else, why chance it? Okay, so now we're gonna come on over to midnight. Now, that's still a significant amount of wind between me and there, but it's not 40 miles an hour. It tops was 30, 32. So I would rather chance it tonight at midnight and run through that that is actually going to get me a really good break in. Uh, and then if I come on over to 4 a.m., it's still going to be the same. But once I hit Oklahoma City, you see right across there here headed toward Albuquerque. I mean, that's going to be getting better and better as I go until I get to Albuquerque. And then, you know, sliding the time across. But here's what I want to show. If I wait too long here where I'm at, this is Wednesday. Like, say I decide to hit with it, I'm not gonna leave at midnight, I don't wanna drive at night. Um, I'm just gonna wait and leave Wednesday morning about seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Well, that looks good, That that that's doable, you know? And I get down there, say it's gonna be 12 o'clock when I get there, now look what I'm running into again. So that's not good. You know, cause that gets up, I believe even worse than what it was in the first place in places. Well, about 40 mile an hour gusts. So I was right. It just, it got wider spread as the day went on too. I would rather leave about midnight, 11 o'clock midnight tonight and push on through and drive till about eight, nine o'clock in the morning and hopefully get over around Albuquerque or Milan or somewhere like that um, and shut down even if I only make it to Klein's Corner or something like that. And I may not even make it that far. I may run out of hours as soon as I get in New Mexico. I should be able to make it at least to Klein's Corner from here, though. I've done that before. So, anyway, I really like this app. I think this is a must-have in the RV transport. Um, and you will have to go through. I did sign up for it and subscribed, or whatever you call it. I, don't, I wouldn't say it, call it subscribed, but um, it's free never paid a dime just signed into it with my email so it can save my settings because there are uh, settings in here that you go through like you want to make sure and change the wind from knots to miles per hour the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit the rain from millimeters to inches uh, you know just change it to where it pertains to what you're looking at and make it easier for you to understand and that that this has been one of the one of the best tools that free tools especially that i've had since i started this now the wind alert i know a lot of people like this one but i've never really been able to do a lot with it i, I got the windy app worked for me so uh you know i'm sure it's great if you know how to navigate it but i don't so i just stick with the windy app so i may be dead wrong on that as far as waiting until about midnight you know, the wind could actually pick up and get worse by midnight, but I feel like that's my best shot. I am good right here where I'm at. The weather's calm, you know, not a big deal. And, but I feel like by the time I get to Oklahoma City, it's really going to be whipping and it's only going to get worse as the night goes on until it starts blowing out. 
And once it does start blowing out, then I'll have a window of wind, which I'm hoping is going to be less than 30 mile an hour gusts in the 20s. And I can handle that. I was doing good last night at, at 30 and 31 mile an hour gusts, but the sustained wind was a lot lower than that. It would be like 18 mile an hour sustained wind. It's just whenever the gusts got up to uh, closer to the t upper 40 spectrum, like uh, or the upper 30s, closer to 40 mile an hour, that's when I start feeling it. And it's just not worth it to me. But um, anyway, I'm hoping I'm doing, hoping I'm hitting it right. And uh, there's not really a right way to do it. So I know the wind is getting really aggravating and it's getting expensive. You know, the days where I'm sitting where I need to be riding it, you know, that's no good. But I don't, in the 18 wheeler all the years I drove 18 wheeler, I don't know that I recall, especially flat bedding, I never shut down for wind. And that's one thing that I've, I gotta say about flat bedding over this is you don't have to worry about the wind. But unless you have a really tall load or something like that, most of the stuff I hauled set no more than two to three feet over the deck and weight was heavy as heck and hung off both ends of the trailer. So it held me down pretty good. So I left last night at Joplin probably about 10 o'clock and I drove. The wind was pretty rough when I first left, but I saw it was gonna get better and it wasn't undoable. So uh, as I come down I-44, it just kept getting easier and easier, lighter and lighter. By the time I got to Oklahoma City, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, and then I started to cross and it picked up a little bit more between Oklahoma City and Amarillo. And then it got, it went away after I went through Amarillo. I didn't really notice any more wind after Amarillo. Got over here to Russell's in Glen Rio, New Mexico and I was tired, I'm not used to running at night. So that, you know, fighting the wind and everything else, I, I had to cruise in on like 65 most of the way over here. And uh, when I got over here, I was tired. I pulled in, got some sleep. I checked the weather again. And the thing about it is, is by the time I woke up, the wind had already picked back up. So I'm stuck again. I could have kept going, made another two hours down the road, but what would it matter? You know, I'd have woke up in the wind either way. And I know they got good food here. I know I like to eat, so. But there's not really any good way outside for me to show you how hard the wind is blowing that I know of. You can see like the the uh, fairings on that trailer blowing around, but that's not, doesn't really look bad. That pole, let's see if I can get a steady shot. That thing just been sitting here rocking back and forth. You know. But uh, every now and again, I'll see somebody walking across the parking lot and they're leaned into it at a 45 degree angle looking like they're uh, looking like they're climbing a set of stairs. So I would really like to go back to sleep by like seven, get up at midnight and then just push through as far as I can go. Cause there's a really, really good weather window at, at midnight, about 11 o'clock tonight, the wind will completely go away and it'll be good running as far as I want to drive which will probably be no about sunlight. I can't drive through. I can drive, all, I've, I've always been able to drive any time of day, but I cannot. If I get up an hour before the sun, sun comes up, when the sun starts coming up, I'm ready for a nap. But now sun going down doesn't bother me a bit, but the sun coming up kills me every day. That's all that window's cracked. You can see all this. Let's see. I did notice when I had that front shade out, you could see the other 18 wheelers over there going. So I also wanted to show again on the Windy app, the 30 miles per hour right there, that is the sustained wind. And we're not allowed to drive even if we wanted to over 25 mile an hour sustained wind. Now when you change over to wind gusts, um, well, I hit the wrong button, hit wind gusts, and then find my location. It's 51 mile an hour gust right here where I'm at right now. And while I possibly could have made it on over to around Albuquerque, I mean, I didn't want to take a chance on being on the road when that came in, you know. It is so much better to play it safe than sorry. And then the slider down here at the bottom, if I move it forward, you know, I'm gonna be 
it's going to be like this until probably about 10 o'clock then it'll slack off to 34 mile an hour wind i could possibly leave right around then but at 11 o'clock look at that 12 mile an hour winds and if we look i'm going to kind of zoom on out to where we can see where i'm going actually going all right so there's really nothing else to talk about in front of me once i get pretty much on the other side of albuquerque i'll be through there uh, before anything else picks up so later on that night i decided to go ahead and take off and i really like being able to put the windy app up on my screen uh with the ai box that i did the video on not long ago it really helps having it right there in front of you versus having to check it on your phone and stuff but get pulled out of here and get on the road and see how this goes so the wind finally laid down and i got left out about 11 10 30 11 o'clock from uh brussels over in glen rio new mexico that wind was rough there today it was getting up to 52 mile an hour gusts it was crazy at times you know it wasn't like that all day but it was there was a few times it got really bad but uh that's why i decided to wait it out right there and run third shift tonight uh used to when i was younger i preferred to drive at night and now since i've gotten older eh, not so much but it is what it is you gotta take your weather windows when you can get it So just woke up here in Kingman. It is Friday morning, about 2 a.m. And the place that I deliver to doesn't open till, I think they start taking deliveries at nine o'clock. Uh, pulled up my fuel up and got to looking. Kind of frustrated. Here, I'll show you why. All right, in order to see what our fuel discount is, we go to Fleet Advance. And then whenever you pull it up, it'll bring a map up. <clears throat> now most of the time it's kind of glitchy and it takes a while to load up but for whatever reason with my poor internet service it is still loading up fairly quick today now when I stopped here when I was doing my research on where I was going to buy fuel at the fuel right here was five well it's not coming up it's not responding there it is the fuel right here was full 45 a gallon so the fuel right well if i can get all up here to it right there was 404 a gallon so i was going to leave here where i'm at which is at the petro right here well i don't think that's even far enough back right here I was gonna leave here where I'm at and ride up to the TA where I could get it for 404 do you guys see this right it's went up from 445 to 514 and from up here where I was gonna get cheaper now it is cheaper at the um, now it's cheaper at the USA Truck Center, and I've never even bought fuel there. I've never been there, been in, never even been in there. And right here at the TA where it was um, full four when I got here earlier today, earlier this morning, it is now five oh four or five fourteen. So that is one dollar and one dollar and uh what two cents no 
No, one dollar and ten cents a gallon it went up. Now, if we click on it here. Five thirty nine and five fourteen. So that's not that the fuel has went up. It's that the discount has basically went away. So that's really throwing a wrench in my plans. I am dead empty. I'm gonna buy roughly 103 gallons of fuel, which will be an extra hundred dollars out of my pocket. So not real, not real happy about that. So we are right here at John RV in Rancho Cucamonga. I'm hoping there's not a big long line getting in here. And it looks like there's not. I have had to park in this turning lane before if y'all saw that video. Sit here and wait for everybody to move, but it don't look to me like I got hardly anybody in here today. So, and if you come here, I, I was under the impression everybody had been here before, but uh, if you come here and you had never been here before, um, you just pull in on this short horseshoe right here. I ain't here. Three other transporters down there, though. Pull right around to the one in front of you and just stop right there and unhook. So once you once you get stopped, whether you pull all the way to the stop sign or whether you pull in behind somebody else, like I just did, go ahead and take your keys, open the doors that you need to open to get to the control panel to get your battery out. Um, go ahead and disconnect, get your tag, all that stuff. Anything you're going to take with you when you leave, go ahead and get it off the unit and uh, pull on outside by the privacy fence. And they're going to pull this thing around. They're going to wash it. They're going to detail it. They're going to compl completely clean it up and go over it with a fine tooth comb. So it does take a while. I would say on an average about two, two hours, two to three hours. So bring your lunch, you know. That's why a lot of people don't like going to Giant RV, but I don't mind it. It gives me a minute to do, you know, get my paperwork ready and get everything else done I need to get done without being in a rush. So, anyway, um, on this load, when I saw the fuel discount shrinking and the the fuel prices going up, I start, kind of started getting nervous, wondering where I was going to be at on this load. And it was 216 a mile. The gross pay on $4,473.36, and I spent $1,525 in fuel. And that's enough to get me out and back to Indiana. Now, if you guys remember, if you've been watching my videos, I used to do this exact same trip on $950. That's a major jump. But after everything was said and done, I, after fuel, I sent to the bank $2,948.36, and that is what I needed to make for the week, so no complaints. I mean, don't get me wrong. I drew up when I seen everything changing. The fuel price is going up, the fuel discount coming down, but it all worked out, even with the wind. You know, if the wind's blowing and you have to sit, you're losing money, and also if you're driving in the wind and the wind is causing your truck to have to work harder to get through the wind, your fuel mileage is going to drop way down and you're you're losing money. So the wind is just an obstacle, obstacle we can't get around, but with the wind that I encountered on this trip and everything else that played into this trip, I was pretty happy with that outcome. Now, a year ago, that would have been 3300 but in all honesty, I figured I would have took a harder hit than that. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, anything I can think of uh, that might help you out, I'll put links to it in the description. And thanks for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.